has a very special meaning to me, and so I want to know why you chose that. Okay, well, this is actually proven to be a pretty controversial song. I don't know if you've had any conversations about it with anyone, but there's just this huge controversy over, is God's love really reckless, mm. or was it planned, mm. you know? And so I, I've heard the back and forth, and at first I, I was unsure of how I felt even about this song. Sure. Um, but it's kind of won me over. I really love this song now because God is not a reckless person. His His love was planned. But to love us is yeah. certainly kind of reckless. I mean, yeah. yeah. 
Well, for me, um, a, a dear friend uh, sent that to us after a, a time together uh, here at the beach, and I'd never heard it before. And I just, like you, I, it, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, and it leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it. Um, and he still gives himself. I mean, you know, I just, it's so powerful. Well, I have had um, the great joy of worshiping with you as you led us um, and the teens in the area into worship or ushered us into worship on Tuesday nights. Um, but you have a great testimony. And when God pressed upon me as I prayed through who the guests would be on the show, um, I came up and I said, would you please <laughs> come and share your story? So, well, you share that a little bit? I, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. Um, I, I've just loved to sing ever since uh, I was a young girl. Uh, there's so many pictures of me uh, doing choir at my grandparents' church and, you know, just always sort of lost in the crowd, but wanting to sing. And uh, I had three brothers who were brutally honest with me about how they felt my singing came across. And so... <laughs> Uh, I would just sing at the top of my lungs. I'd walk through the house whenever I was doing my chores, um, just every day at the top of my lungs. I didn't care what song it was, if it was Disney princess music or, you know, Christian hymns. I was just singing. So you really have a song on your heart all the time. All the time. Yeah. All the time. Everything that. comes out in song Me form. too. Me too. And uh, my brothers just one day, they just had enough. And they said, Leah, would you please just stop? Nobody wants to hear it. You sound like a dying cat. Oh, gosh. And I just... Brothers are horrible sometimes. I know, brothers are horrible. (laughs) But they kept it to themselves for that long. Couldn't they just continue to keep it to themselves? So I wasn't sure if I believed them. You know how brothers are. So back in the day, we had those cassette players and recorders. And so we had one of those. And I said, I'm going to see if I really sound like that because... You know, we all sound different to ourselves sometimes. So I got a cassette and I put it in there and I pressed record and I sang uh, a little song or something and I played it back to myself Mm -hmm. and I could not believe that that is how I really sounded. And I mean, it wasn't a dying cat, but it was not how I, it did not portray the worship that I felt in my heart. Yes. And I said, that's it. I'm never singing again. I mean, I was only 10 years old. Yeah. But I said, I'm never singing again. Never, ever. That's how I sound. And as much as I want to sing, I'm just not going to, you know, put my family or anyone else through that anymore. And that lasted about a week. And I just went right back to singing Because God was building that uh, muscle, that voice muscle. Oh, yeah. And now that I realized... Spiritual muscle. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so now that I realized that I was not the best singer in the world, I just started praying because Mm -hmm. that's what I wanted more than ever. I just, I love to worship God. And I wanted it to be a joyful noise. Yeah. And so I just kept praying. I said, God, if you would give me the voice to worship you, if you would just, just bless me with a voice to sing. Mm-hmm. And I, and I, I said, I promise I will never turn down an opportunity to worship your name. Yeah. And, and I, God has put me to the test with that promise. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, you've kept it. When people call, you go. And I, I do. love that. I do. I do. So what's your next song that you're going to play for um, us? I have a song. Uh, let's, see. let's see. Do you know Good Good Father? Oh, of course I know Good Good Father. I love this. Song. Yes. Mm. I might just sing along if that's okay. Absolutely. Okay. I won't take away from your voice. I'll do it in a song. <laughs> Dead of night as you tell 
hardly think as you call me Deeper still as you call me Deeper still as you call me Deeper still into love, love You're a good, good father It's who you are, it's who you are ways but because he grafted inside of you the song on your heart and a beautiful unique voice that I just love I remember the first time I walked into <laughs> teen CBS I was like stop who is that singing and I could just sit and listen to you and worship with you all day so I see that you play more than the guitar I, I see that you have that yeah, ukulele, I ukulele which I'm from Hawaii I was really? born there. I didn't know that. Um, yes, I am a hula girl. So oh, that's great. I love a ukulele. My husband Glenn plays it, and uh, we have one. So you want to strum on that for a little bit? Absolutely. Let's have a little fun with the uke. <clears throat> now, I do write some of my own songs. Would you mind if I? I would love that. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see. I wrote one called, uh, I wrote this two years ago. And it's called Beyond the Rainbows. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's sort of um, taking the song Somewhere Over the Rainbow, mm -hmm. Wizard of Oz, mm -hmm. and just kind of expanding on the world behind the rainbow a little bit. Well, this will be interesting because um, that song, um, Somewhere Over the Rainbow, um, is definitely one of the songs that I, I told Glenn I wanted to play at my funeral. I love that song. And um, I went to visit the Wizard of Oz Park at um, in the mountains. Do you remember that? Are you probably a little bit younger than I am? Okay. But I had a brick, a yellow brick from the the yellow brick road, and it was a doorstop in front of my door when I was a little girl. Oh, wow. So I love that. There's all these little um, I call them God wings. Right. Yeah. Right. That's cool. Okay. Let's hear Beyond the Rainbows. Okay. Trouble. 
okay, I'm going to replace my song. <laughs> and that, that is just beautiful because that's everything. I mean, this isn't our home. Right. And right. I, I just love that. That is beautiful. Thank what a great you. take on, on a great song. Mm-hmm. Um, right. So, well, with uh, us segueing into uh, your originals, do you have a song that you're working on right now that... Um, there is one. There's a work in progress right now. Um, it's called Vessel of Christ. Okay. Um, and where did that come from for you? Just, I, I was outside. I was taking my dogs for a walk. And you know how God gives you these moments of clarity in our, in our lives where everything else just fades away. And Absolutely. For, for a split second, you see the bigger picture. Because yeah. all the time with our life, everything going on, we get so busy. We're so close up to the picture. We can't see. What's we can't going see God's on. perspective. Exactly. Absolutely. Yes. I and that. I was just, I was looking around at, you know, yeah. God's creation mm-hmm. and, and everything beautiful that He has made. And, you know, we're, we're here for a blink. A blink. We're here for a blink. And, I mean, everything that we do yeah. should be for the Lord. Yeah. Because, we're only here for a blink. What are we going to do that really matters? Mm-hmm. I mean, and in the end, we're all vessels of Christ. We're all here for I the Lord. I love that. One of my favorite songs, and I actually, Glenn, um, for an anniversary gift, uh, printed out a casting crown song, Who Am I? And it says that we're a flower quickly fading That's and a vapor in the wind and um, and a blink. And what are we going to do? And Oh, I mean, you know, if we all could just think upon that every day of our lives, I think we'd live our lives really differently, don't we? Exactly. Mm-hmm. I think so. Mm-hmm. So, okay, are you ready for something fun? Sure. You're going to be like, what? So you know I was going to do this. What's your hairbrush song? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I, I, I brought my hairbrush because when I was a kid, I would sing into my hairbrush in the mirror Songs like from Amy Grant, Sandy Patty, oh, yeah. you know, and I even, I, I too thought that I had a voice that I could sing. And, um, I, one night, it was a Sunday night service, um, saying to the, to the congregation, thank goodness most people stayed home on Sunday nights and there was only <laughs> like maybe 15 people, but, um, it was an Amy Grant song. And, uh, and then I just recall after singing that, that that was not God's call on my life. <laughs> But I love to sing. I always have a song on my heart, too. But what is your hairbrush song that you would sing when you were younger? When I was younger. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. Um, so my dad is from England. Oh, okay. And he was a piano prodigy there. And oh, just wow. very into classical music. Okay. And that's all we were allowed to listen to okay. until I was about 13. And my first Christian CD was... Was third day, I think. Third well, day, third day. Marlo girl. Yeah. Or my oh, first Christian CD. Not bad to start off. Not with. too bad. <laughs> yeah. So I was 13 years old, but up till then, I just knew Beethoven, Mozart, mm-hmm. Rachmaninoff, all those guys. Yeah. But we did have Disney movies. So my go-to hairbrush song was "Part of Your World" from Little Mermaid. Oh. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Well, um. With uh, with uh, childhood and being a um, daughter of a prodigy, um, how has that influenced you in the music industry? Well, uh, my my father definitely wanted me to succeed in music. He everything he did, he mm-hmm. did it with all his might and all his dedication. He mm-hmm. he plays chess. He became a life master in wow. chess. Uh, became a golfer. He could have been a pro golfer if he wanted to. Um, he became a doctor. He is a doctor, and uh, and he's still really good at the piano. Um, so everything he does, he does. Everything with he does, he does all mm-hmm. the way with, mm-hmm. with excellence. And at at five or six years old, he sat me down in front of the piano because I think he thought that I would be like him mm-hmm. and just pick it up like he did. Yeah. Uh, turned out we have two very different learning styles. He is very uh, notes and just logically oriented when it comes to music and I'm really just feel it and mm. write it. He would come home and he would ask me, what have you learned on the piano? What is What was today's lesson about? And I would tell him, I don't know, but I wrote this song on the piano mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, we just had So you different. were very much more spirit led. Oh yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Even from an early age, sure. I would just, I would play by ear and just wow. be spirit led that way. Wow. So, but for a while, uh, because 
he was he was not too happy with the way I was learning. I just quit. I quit the piano. Mm-hmm. Um, I started guitar when I was 14, and uh, I took lessons for a little bit, and uh, then piano I didn't pick up again until my 20s. Okay. So, all right. Well, I, I know that every single Christian has those times where we just feel really distant from the Lord in our walk. Um, I don't think there's anybody that's walked with him that hasn't felt that separation at a time or two. Oh, right. So for you, when you're in that space, um, what's your go-to like for worship? Do you uh, do you worship with just your vocals? Do you pick up an instrument? Um, what does that look like? Where, wherever I am, it's, it's mm-hmm. always it's always vocally, mm-hmm. and if I don't have an instrument lying around, I'll mm-hmm. make an instrument out of mm-hmm. anything that's near. Uh, but definitely, we do. We all go through those times where I, I was talking to someone the other day. I was working on a song called Embers, and our our passion for Christ is is a lot like a fire. There's so many songs about out there yeah, about soul on our, fire, soul on fire, or start a fire in me. <laughs> Uh, there's so many songs about that, and that's for a reason. Yeah. And I just love that analogy because our our fire can flicker and wave and sometimes yeah. go out. But my song Embers is about as long as we have the coals, as long as we have the embers there to make that fire spring back up. That that's all we need. That's what God cares about. That's the heart of us. I I, I am sitting here in awe that you're saying this because last night we had Julia Brown, um, a, a, just a sweetheart that oh, she's visited. So sweet. Yes. She was at our house last night for dinner, and we had this very conversation. She goes, I just, I want the spirit and the fire to be in me, and I just want to do ministry. And I said, mundane faithfulness, consistency, just slow and steady. I said, what happens when you're fire? It just, it, it, it goes out quickly. Right, right. I said, but if you can just be an ember, if you could just be a small spark, and let God use that. That's what the Great Commission is about. Exactly. Just, Absolutely. just being a, a, a simmering of, of, yeah. So the same thing. I love wow. that. Wow. Isn't that cool? That's great. I can't wait for you to ask her about that. <laughs> yeah. So well, she'll see the video and, and, and she'll be like, what? <laughs> so you just affirmed what we talked about last night. Absolutely. So, um, well, um, it's probably about time for us to wrap up today. You have been a blessing to me and to so many others. Um, you asked me uh, last minute if there was a song that um, I really like these days, and I sent you one. Mm-hmm. Would you close us with that song? I just love it. It's called Absolutely. Clear the Stage, and um, the, 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 the lyrics are clear the stage and set the sound and lights ablaze. It's the measure you must take to crush the idols. Jerk the pews and all the decorations too until the congregation's few and then have a revival. Tell your friends that this is where the party ends until you're broken of your sins and you can't be social. Then seek the Lord and wait for what he has in store and know that great is your reward. So just be hopeful. I love that song and it's on repeat all the time in my house these days and um I would love for you to close this out with that. Absolutely. Thanks. Clear the stage and set the sound lights a blaze. If that's the measure you must take to crush the Jerk the pews and all the decorations too Until the congregations spew and have revival Tell your friends that this is where the party ends Until you're broken of your sins, you can't be so sure
begging for 